The days of the kitchen strictly being a woman's realm within a home are quickly fading behind us. When dealing with a topic like this, you're going to have both positively and negatively charged approaches to the conversation. Unfortunately, the argumentative tone is heard much more often than the positive, and it goes something like this. Women do not need to be in the kitchen. They can do much more than sit around and cook for their husbands, and it's good that they're no longer shackled to being a homemaker. Let me start with this. I agree. At the same time, this type of undertone in the conversation makes it sound as though this is a win for women and a loss for men. Today, I want to come from the standpoint of positivity that this is not a step back for men, that this is an opportunity, and it's very freeing. The same cultural norm that restricted women to being at home and in the kitchen is the same cultural norm that blocked men out of the kitchen, saying that it was too feminine and not a man's place to be there. There are many cultures around the world which still tell their men to stay out of the kitchen so that the women will stay in the kitchen. When women were released of this social construct in the U.S., men were as well. It just took us a few years to figure it out. My name is Chaudhry, and today we're talking about kitchen ideas for men and bachelors that will help encourage you to step into your kitchen more often. It's said that studies have shown that a man's ability to not only know his way around the kitchen, but to wield his cutting knife and cast iron pan as though it were his sword and shield increases his security and confidence in his masculinity overall. As a bachelor, not only does this help you tremendously with your inner self, it's an attribute that is widely found as attractive by potential partners. Now that we've touched on all of this, let me see if I can help you turn your kitchen into a space that feels like your domain, somewhere where you feel very comfortable. The first suggestion I have for you is to create some space. There's two reasons for this. One is that men usually like the ability to freely move around in order to get into a cooking rhythm and a workflow. The second is that we often enjoy cooking with guests around us, and this gives others the ability to be there without feeling like you're crowded. Including your date or partner in cooking can be a fun experience when you have space. It can be just the opposite if you don't. Having an open concept pass-through kitchen is ideal for this, a kitchen which has multiple entry and exit paths. But if you don't have that, at least try to set up a separate workstations within your kitchen. An example could be separating by a few feet the areas where you cut and season your meat versus where you prep and rinse vegetables. This could mean two separate cutting boards on opposite sides of your countertops. The next few suggestions revolve around what inherently feels more natural to you. Men tend to be less interested in the decor items of a kitchen and more interested in efficiency and raw function. My suggestion is to combine the two in both an artistic and decorative way. The idea and purpose behind this is to take the functional cooking items and just make them more interesting as a display. First up, go ahead and pass on the plain plastic cutting boards. Look for a three to four inch thick wood cutting board that has some weight and boldness to it. Another option would be picking up a stainless steel cutting board that you can have displayed on one of your countertops. Speaking of both wood and steel, if you have the ability to do it, consider remodeling all or part of your countertops to be stainless steel or wood. This allows you to ditch the cutting boards and chop your meals directly on the counter surface without having to worry about staining. It's easy in prep and all you do is wipe it clean when you're done. The next thing we need to touch on are your knives. Don't skimp on your knife collection. Nobody wants to watch you stand in the corner struggling to cut a steak with a butter knife like a Neanderthal. Think of the kitchen as your new garage and your knife set as your main toolbox. Go online and take a look at some companies like Wustoff, something that you'll be proud to have in your kitchen that will work very well. Here's a bonus tip. When you order a knife set, they typically come standard with the traditional storage block that hides the blades. But maybe you want to show off your new blades. Maybe you want more of a masculine or chef's kitchen type look. If that's the case, there are open face stands and mountable blocks, which will proudly display your knife set while conveniently storing them. The next thing I would recommend you taking a look at is open shelving. Consider taking one section of your upper cabinets and replacing them with shelves. This will allow you to display a few items that you've put effort into picking out and you don't want hidden behind cabinet doors. Having an array of spices openly on a shelf could be appealing in the sense that you can easily find ingredients you need and it could actually be an impressive exhibit for your guests, signaling that you know what you're doing in the kitchen. You could also have something like dishes or kitchenware that you've spent some money on and believe deserve some spotlight. Now it's time to bring a little more romance and ambiance to your kitchen, something that's capable of setting the mood if needed. 
One of the most simple and highly effective ways to do this is the manipulation of light. If you have the renovation or update budget, take a look into dimmer switches. If installed, this is a very quick and easy way to adjust light to the exact mood you want. Another great option is under cabinet lighting. This can be added to any kitchen and is quite effective at creating a different mood. I do this often by turning off all other lights in my kitchen and only leaving the undermount lights on. If you simply don't have the budget to add either of these, I have two suggestions for you. One is that if you have a mounted microwave, check to see if it has an under lamp or surface light that shines down which you can toggle on and off in the evening after the sun sets. The second suggestion is to buy a couple of candles which can create some pocket lighting around your kitchen while the ceiling lights are off. There's a lot more to do in a kitchen which I will add in future videos. I just don't like each of these tutorial videos getting too long. So for now, those are six items that you can take a look at. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you feel like sticking around a while, feel free to subscribe. See you on the next one.